It's a beautiful morning. Yes. Okay, here you go, Lydia. Lydia fell on her job just that quick. <laughs> it's Friday, y'all. Good morning. How y'all doing? 5.55 a.m. Great morning. Post your flag in your country, please. I sound really Mississippian when I say that. Post your flag in your country, por favor. Gracias. Ah, muchísimas gracias. Ah, yes. Yes. Now, back to my real self. What's up? How y'all doing? Hey, Elise and Denise, the identical twins, who I love so much. Now, <laughs> I always tell Lise Hay and I don't tell Denise Hay. So Denise was like, what about me? I'm like, I don't see you. Uh -huh. Well, I really do see you. When I see Karen, I see you. So, Good morning, good morning. How's everybody this morning? Hey. All right. Flag and country, please. Flag and country, please. Flag and country. Thank you. Thank you, Trina. Thank you. Thank you, Mia. Wonderful. Thank you, Tamara or Tamara. I'm not sure which one. There you go. Now y'all represent. Ladies, did you post your country and your flag? Yes. Did you post my country and flag? No. <laughs> From Florida. Good morning. Oh, what's the temperature? 36 degrees. What, what is it? 36. It's 36 degrees here? Yes, ma'am. A little cold this morning here in the sip. Buenos dias, Senorita Kelly from Arizona. Buenos dias, Pamela. Yes, they're laughing at me. Y'all got a problem with my Spanish? Well, that's your problem. All righty. Hey, Thantine, I love you, girl. Y'all, it's Friday already. Hello from Newport News, Virginia. Bless you this morning. Y'all, they were like just entirely too big for my face. I know y'all saw that. Y'all didn't want to tell me because y'all didn't want to hurt my feelings. But it's okay. They too big. <laughs> I was looking at myself in the mirror. I couldn't see nothing but the glasses. I'm serious. I had to go ahead and drop them again. You know, I remember I dropped them and I picked them back up. And then I was like, you know what? I got to drop them for right now. Hello from sunny Trinidad and Tobago. But yeah. Aw, oh, you can't find your flag, Renee. She has an Android. says so she can't find her flag, oh, Tiffany. They don't, friends. But Tiffany has an Android. Okay. They don't have all the same. Oh, oh, okay. Well, can't you, like, download an uh, app? I don't know. You can try to work on work on this weekend. I love you too, Pamela. I love y'all. Long Island, New York in the house. 26 degrees in Dallas. Bless you. Uh, 23 degrees in Roseville, Michigan. Oh, and I've been getting y'all. Thank you for the cards. Y'all know I got a birthday coming up. Thank you for the birthday cards you've been sending and all your books and journals and t-shirts and vision boards. We've been praying over the vision boards, but thank you. Y'all are just so sweet. I'm just so totally amazing. So, um, you want to get a head start? We're going to go to 2 Samuel. You guessed it. You guessed it. 2 Samuel 3. We're going to look into the life of David a little bit more. We're going to look into his life, y'all. This is some good stuff. I cannot wait to tell this story today. Like, the t I had a team rolling this morning, y'all, talking about Uncle Abner. If y'all missed yesterday, if you missed any of this on David, you need to just go this weekend, just have a, a little prayer warrior fun and go back through these videos. Yes, I love you, prayer warrior. So remember, we're one million strong. We are shoulder to shoulder. We are living in warrior blessings. We are about. We are in the beginning state of the greatest awakening, world revival. Yes, we are by faith. I believe it, and so we're believing God for uh, healing for Avery. We're believing God to bring Monica Sykes home. She's been missing since October of 2016, and you know we just. Oh, you love to follow me. I love you, Kathy. I love that you follow me. Thank you. <laughs> And so, yeah, we're just believing God for some big things. And I let y'all, I love y'all so much, I let y'all give me purple hearts. Y'all don't understand. Brittany understands. We used to always had this rival about purple and pink. And then one day, somebody said, purple hearts for Kelly. And Lord was like, see? See there? I was like, oh, I love it. All of a sudden, purple's like this beautiful color. I mean, I've been, I've been worn with purple versus pink for years. And y'all humbled me. I think it was the fast, too. Like, I didn't have any fight in me to say purple's not my favorite color. But it it is it's it's working on me now, y'all. That purple looks good on this page. So yes, I'm excited. It is six o'clock on the dot. Just want to have a little fun with y'all this morning. I love you guys. Hello from the A. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Make sure, prayer warriors, that you share this video. Listen, y'all. Hope you read my post today. But we reached seven million people this last week through these videos. How seven million? Seven million people. And you know how we did that? Because amazing people like you. 
you hit that share button in your bottom left hand corner. Otherwise, they're not going to know about us. People are not going to know about us if we don't share the video. So for those of you who have done that, thank you. And those of you who have, have not, I just have the faith that you're going to do it. Praise the Lord, because that is the way we evangelize and other people find out about us. Yes, purple is royalty, you're right, but pink really is a pretty color. But yes, <laughs> praise God. And this page is like so beautiful. So y'all, when we show up next week on CBN's page with the 700 Club, don't forget we bring in the hearts and the flags. It is just so pretty to go back through these and look at this. It's gorgeous. I love it. And of course, red is for the blood, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So listen, yesterday... Um, well, people have been asking me, those who kind of like gotten on later. And happy birthday. Hello, birthday warriors. Happy birthday to you. And um, people have been asking, like, what kind of fast are we doing? Because, you know, if you're just coming on, you don't really know. You might see me disappearing, but you don't really know what's wrong with me. Well, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with me. Actually, everything is going pretty good. Uh, we're on a 40-day fast. This is day 26 for us, for the team. And I am doing, several of us on the team are just doing liquids only. And that's not caffeine, cafe latte, none of that fun stuff. We are like, it's just like for survival. Uh, water, juice, protein, shades, because we got to not have muscle wasting. And um, soups that don't have anything in it. Did I miss anything? And, and broth, but I don't like broth. And I got sick of tomato soup. So I may just do the organic soups. And Kroger has organic soup. So thank God for, Lord, thank you for Kroger. See, thank hey, Kroger, God bless you. Because I know that soup is in there just for me. Amen. And so that's what we're doing. This is day 26. I've lost about 15 pounds. So, and it's not over yet. So anyway, I just wanted to share with you what we're doing. Because we're just believing God for miracles. And many of you have joined in in some shape, form, or fashion with the 40 days. Uh, you know, 40 days. Every time something in the Bible happened at 40 days, there was a big breakthrough or something big happened. So we just believe in God as we advance at the end of this 40 days. We're going to, and I'm already saying, we're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders. So that's why we are doing it. Um, whatever God, is not too late for you to start. This could be day one for you. Something that you need to give up that you really, really like. Like, I like food. Like, some people say, if food is not my issue, well, I don't know any human that doesn't like food but i mean that's you fine but whatever god tells you to give up i know one of our prayer boys is giving up pepsi and you know i my grandma used to be hooked on pepsi i used to be hooked on mountain dew so i know that's not as easy as it sounds so yeah if you can get if you know you were hooked on pepsi or hooked on coffee or hooked on a certain kind of bread or a certain restaurant just whatever god leads you to give up give it up because god's gonna bless you for giving it up okay now with that being said let's roll y'all it's that time to get into this word i'm so excited to talk about uncle abner <laughs> Uncle Abner again and Ish Shabbath. Yeah, that. And uh, so let's go, y'all, to 2 Samuel 3, begin at verse 1, and then I'm going to read 6 through 21. And I'm going to read from the message version today. So give me one second because I was talking to y'all and I forgot to pull it back up. Hold on. That gives you time to find it. Y'all ready? So, oh, we want you to let me pull it up on here. It won't turn it over for me. Y'all got it? If not, I'm going to read from the Living Translation. But the message really was fun. Hold on. Let me try it on this one. I don't know. I think I've had it pulled up on the phone that I'm using for this video. I don't know why I won't pull up on my iPad. All about Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It washes us white as snow. Washes white as snow. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to get it. When I first started doing these videos, y'all, if I hadn't had a scripture, I would probably have had a heart attack on this thing. Now, I'm like, you know what? I'm normal. I'm a real person. I breathe. And my blood is red running through my veins, just like y'all's. And I don't have my scripture pulled up because what I had up is on this phone that I'm doing this video on. I was going to say something else. Oh, tomorrow makes our two-month anniversary of Facebook Live, and it has been amazing. We've grown over 40,000 people in two months to the page, 40,000 new family members. So tomorrow's our anniversary, January 28th. We started November 28th, so God is doing an amazing thing. We just want to give him glory for that. Okay, I'll at least put the little thing for singing. Okay, I'm ready for real now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Holy Spirit, have your way. We're so excited to come before you this morning. Thank you for your precious word. Jesus, thank you for your blood, your precious blood that washes us white as snow. Lord, we're going to this day this morning. Speak. Your children are listening. Your servants are listening. Lord, let us learn from this story, oh God. We thank you for your word. Have your way. Teach us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Second Samuel, beginning at 3, starting at 1. The war between the house of Saul and the house of David dragged on and on. The longer it went on, the stronger David became with the house of Saul getting weaker and weaker. Now I am dropping down to six. Abner took advantage of the continuing war between the house of Saul and the house of David to gain power for himself. Saul had had a concubine. Remember King Saul? Saul had had a concubine, Rizpah, the daughter of Aya. One day, Ishbosheth confronted Abner. What business do you have sleeping with my father's concubine? Ooh. 
I guess he asked him, didn't he? What business do you have sleeping with my father's concubine? Abner lost his temper with Ishabeth. Treat me like a dog, will you? Is this the thanks I get for sticking by the house of your father Saul and all his family and friends? I personally saved you from certain capture by David, and you make an issue out of my going to bed with a woman? What God promised David, I'll help accomplish. Transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and make David ruler over the whole country, both Israel and Judah, from Dan to Beersheba. If not, may God do his worst to me. Ishbosheth, cowed by Abner's outburst, couldn't say another word. Abner went ahead and sent personal messengers to David. Make a deal with me and I'll help bring the whole country of Israel to you. Great, David said. It's a deal, but only on one condition. You're not welcome here unless you bring Michael, Saul's daughter, with you when you come to meet me. David then sent messengers to Ishbosheth, son of Saul. Give me back Michael, whom I want as my wife at the cost of a hundred Philistine foreskins. Ishbosheth ordered that she be taken from her husband, Paltiel, son of Laish. But Paltiel followed her, weeping all the way to Bahiram. There Abner told him, go home. And he went home. Abner got the elders of Israel together and said, Only yesterday it seems you were looking for a way to make David your king. So do it now. For God has given the go-ahead on David. By my servant David's hand, I'll see my people Israel from the oppression of the Philistines and all of their other enemies. Abner took the Benjamites aside and spoke to them. Then he went to Hebron for a private talk with David, telling him everything that Israel in general and Benjamin in particular were planning to do. When Abner and the 20 men who were with him met with David in Hebron, David laid out a feast for them. Abner then said, I'm ready. Let me go now to rally everyone in Israel for my master, the king. They'll make a treaty with you, authorizing you to rule them however you see fit. Abner was sent off with David's blessing. And so I named this thing today, y'all. I'm getting it all back. Do you see oh, the divine products of God? When his hand begins to move, I tell you, hell better get out of the way. Because if you can remember back in the last chapter, go back and review uh, Family, Warrior Nation. Go back and review because it all makes sense when you piece it all together. But if you remember the last chapter, David finally ascended to the throne, but he was only given Judah because Judah is the only, only tribe that took a stand for what God had said. Everybody knew David was to be king. Everybody knew he was to be king of all of Israel. But, you know, Uncle Abner, which was Saul's uncle, his uh, brother's son, you know, um, did I get that right? He's his uncle. He was Saul's uncle. So, um, he decided to kind of like have an ulterior motive, and so he decides to anoint Ishbosheth, which was Saul's son, that like didn't go to battle with them, like he didn't die with them on the battlefield and they were fighting the Philistines. Well, I don't really know where it came from. But like all of a sudden when Saul dies and David begins to ascend to the throne, you know, Uncle Abner decides that he's going to anoint Ishbosheth over the other tribes of Israel since Judah took a stand for what was right and anointed David. So, yeah, so you got this thing. You know, Abner was the strong militant leader. And so that's, that's what you have going into this chapter. But at the end of chapter 2, you have a bloodbath. Make sure you go back and read it because it's crazy. There's there's one uh, battle where Uncle Abner decides that he just wants to sport, just want to have fun and watch people kill each other. So he goes to Joab, which is the commander of David's army, and he says, you know what? Let's let our men go out to play. Now, I ain't never known playing to be killing one another, but that's the way he referred to it. He wanted to make sport out of it. So it's basically like gladiators, if you will. They just Everybody else kind of sits back and watches each other to see who's going to kill each other first. So instead of the whole army of David's army and the whole army of Saul's army, which Abner's over, they picked 12 from each side and y'all, 24 people dead. They they killed, they, they grabbed each other by the hair and pierced each other in the side and they killed one another. Now what, what kind of sport is that? I don't, I don't want no parts of that kind of sport. But that's what they did. And so 24 people died that day with all these other people watching. Then you got Asahel. It goes right into this next war where Asahel, who was a part of, uh, he was Joel's brother, he was part of David's army. Y'all, they said he could run like a gazelle. They say he could run. They say he could run. So he decides to run after Abner. I don't know why he did that. But I do know why he did it. He ran after Abner because he felt like if he could get Abner either bound or slain, then that would clear the pathway for David to go ahead and ascend to the throne of all of Israel. You know how, like, somebody does you wrong and, and like, you're going to, like, just deal with it. Like, you know what? I know God going to vindicate me. But your friend like, no. No, I ain't going to let it go down like that. I'm going to step in. I'm going to do something. Just like when David went to Saul's camp while he was asleep. And it was his friend that was like, you know, I'll take him out. I know you're not going to do it. You said I'm such anointed. But let me, I'll kill him. Let me do it. They're like, nope, nobody's going to touch him. So it was like they were after hell. He was basically trying to, to help the kingdom, help David and clear his path to the kingdom. But, you know, God doesn't need help. 
when God is ready for you to come forth in the sin, nobody can stop you. So please go back and read that because that's important for what we're going to talk about next week about what happened to Asahel running behind Abner. Abner even said, look, please stop running behind me. I don't want to have to kill you. He kept running. Yeah, he kept running. He didn't He didn't believe him. And then Abner killed him with the, the blunt end of his sword. It was like he wasn't expecting that. He died in a way that he was not expecting. So just go back and read that. That's good stuff. So now here we are in chapter 3. And you can go back and read all of how David had all these wives and he began to have all these children. And y'all, I'm telling you, uh, in Deuteronomy, the law, the law said, don't have all these wives, don't do it. But see, David did it. So now we begin to see a little shadow of how he began to miss it. But we'll get more into that next week. But what I wanted to focus on today was the fact that, you know, Abner anointed Ishabeth. And, you know, Ishabeth led for a couple of years, but he was like king fit for nothing. He was not a strong leader. He was not a good king. He was never supposed to be king. And then one day, Ishbosheth decides to like check Abner about his daddy's concubine. Like Saul is dead anyway. Like why are you talking about Rispa? Notice Abner didn't say he did it. He basically said, you mean to tell me after all I've done for your daddy and all I've done for you and how I've held this king together and I'm your strongest militant leader. I'm your BFF. I'm your best friend. Don't nobody else even like you. I don't see him talking about nobody else. Do you see anybody else in his support system? I don't see anybody else that was with Abner, but uncle, with, with, with Ispachef, but Abner. And he was like, you mean to tell me after all that I've done for you, you mean to tell me that you're going to check me about a woman? So it's like, it's, he didn't say it wasn't true. He was just like, this is trivial. You mean to tell me I'm Uncle Abner. I'm your uncle. I'm the leader of this of this command. And you're going to come to me with something petty. Just pe you know anybody that's just petty? Just come to you with just little petty stuff. So that's the way. And he, so he was like, you know what? Just for that, I'm going to make sure. And God can kill me if I don't. I'm going to make sure that everything that's due to David will come to David. I'm going to make sure that he is the king over all of Israel. And it just shows you how when God's will is his will, whatever his will is, it's going to happen in your life. He will even use people who hate you, those who try to destroy you, those who set up a separate empire to destroy you. He will cause those people to turn around and bless you. So that's what happens in this story. It's almost like I was telling the teen this morning, like if you're in a relationship with somebody and you know the relationship is waxing thin, you know you don't want to be in it anyway. So you're just waiting for one, you just say one more thing to me. You just do one more thing and I'm out the door. I'm done. I'm gone. Two snaps, I'm gone. That's how it's like in this thing. It was like I was just waiting for a reason to leave and so when he checked him about risk but he's like that's it i'm out i'm going i'm going to help david and i mean Isabel was probably like oh i said too much you ever been in a conversation and you know you said one word too much and so you get quiet that's what happens in this story he got completely quiet but it was too late abner moved with the quickness he went he let david know he sent him a message listen you know you're supposed to be king. I know you're supposed to be king. You know, my bad about how I anointed Ishabeth and all that. But now I'm going to help you make sure that you're king. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to rally up everybody. I'm going to make sure. And they was like, sure, great. Sounds like a deal. But bring me my wife. You know, the one that I had to uh, bring back 100 Philistine foreskins for. So basically the, the protocol was that they would have to kind of like petition for his wife with King Ishabeth. That was the protocol. David did it. Ishabel wasn't going to argue. He didn't have Abner on his side anymore. He knew he couldn't beat David, so he was like, you can have her. But the thing that tripped me out the most, y'all see how her, uh, her new husband ran behind her crying. Now, why are you running behind her crying when you knew when you married her, she was David's wife? Everybody knew who David was, y'all, in Israel. So it's not like it was a secret that Saul had given his wife to another man. So you knew all along you were on borrowed time because she was never your wife. And so when David sends for his wife, he literally says he ran behind her crying and Abner told him, go home. Dry your tears and go home because you didn't have any business bearing her in the first place. So my whole point is this. <laughs> they make this deal. He gets his wife back. His wife. It's like it just showed that he never forgot that was his wife. Yeah, he ended up marrying other people and all. They have other kids. But he still said, I'm not making a deal with you until you give me what's mine. I'm not doing nothing for you until you give me what's rightfully mine. Bring me my wife. It just shows you that his heart, that he had a genuine love for his wife. And, and that's what men pay attention. Have a genuine love for your wives. We should have a general respect for our husbands. And so it's like, he was like, I'm not doing anything with you. I'm not making a deal with you until you bring my wife. So they make the deal. He brings the wife and the crown. Yeah, he's like, I'm bringing the kingdom to you and your wife. But you see, how God turned that around. Never once do you see David going over that ish Michelle, saying, let's make a deal. You know, you know the kingdom is mine. You don't see any of that. You see David being faithful in his position. And God slowly began to give it all back. Everything the enemy has stolen. Everything that was due to him. And so that's the word this morning. And you can type that in. I'm getting it back. Everything that's mine, I'm getting it back. God is restoring me. He's going to bring it all back to me. Just like he did for David. Because David was faithful. He'll cause even my enemies to turn and be a blessing to me. He will cause even my enemies to 
rally up as a blessing to me. It says that Abner went and began to rally the other tribes to come and support David. He made his business go around and talk to the elders because once you have the co-sign of the elders, everybody's just going to follow suit. He didn't just say, I'm with you, David. He made sure that all the other tribes, well, he reminded them, you know, remember how you were probably you knew David would be king anyway? Well, here's your chance. You were trying to figure out how you were going to do that. Well, guess what? You know, now that Ishbeth has made me upset, I'm doing this out of revenge. I'm not going to tell you that, but regardless of what, doing out of revenge, it was still God's will for David to have the entire nation of Israel. And that's exactly what happened in the story. So y'all, make sure you go back and you read this story line for line. This is some good stuff. I'm telling you, it's better than days of our lives. And it's the truth. That's what's so amazing. This is not some fictitious story. This is the real deal and how we can look and we can look at what happened with Abner and what's about to happen with Abner and what happened with Ishbeth. He gets quiet, real quiet. And how David, it says David got stronger and stronger as the house of Saul got weaker and weaker. And I'd make that declaration over your life today that you are getting stronger and stronger and your enemies are getting weaker and weaker. You are getting stronger and stronger and your enemies are getting weaker and weaker. Your enemies are your stepping stool. They're your step up into the blessing. You're going to step on them or to ascend to the place where God has you. So go back, read that story, y'all. And then rest of this weekend, we're going to go back in on Monday. Lord, we thank you. It's just so good to us, Lord. We just honor you this morning. Make sure you share this video. Lord, we thank you for this message in your word this morning, 2 Samuel 3. Oh, how we honor you for your precious word, God. Thank you for it, God. Thank you for showing us that we don't have to fight. We don't have to remind people of who we are. We don't have to remind people what belongs to us, oh God. All we have to do is stay in position and wait for the right time. And, oh God, and that even our enemies will be at peace with us. Even our enemies, Lord, like Abner came to David and they formed a peace treaty. Lord, thank you, God, that when Abner left, Lord, he left with the blessing of David. David gives us the prime example of how we are to treat our our enemies, oh God, thank you because you said in your word that even our enemies will be at peace with us. God, we thank you for that. God, you said that you will prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. So, Lord, we thank you. That just confirmed that our enemies they have to be there, they have to be in close vicinity in order to see or to see this table that you are preparing before us, God. So, I thank you for this morning for that assurance that you know they don't have to be far off, so they can be right there and they're gonna see how your hand is moving upon their lives, our lives, the prayer warriors, God. And so, we thank you that this morning, oh God, that the blessing that you have for us will not be hidden, but it's for all to see, just as what you have for David, it was for all to see when the timing was right, so God, this morning we thank you that we're getting it all back we shall be remembered, everything that is due to us God, we are getting it back, and God we just honor you for this morning, for the assurance in your word, that we are getting it all back, everything that's been stolen, everything the enemy went in and took from us, God, we're getting it all back, God, and we thank you, all back and then some and we just thank you for this morning, oh God we honor you, Lord, let us not be like Israel and talk too much, Lord. Say too much. Offend others, God. Let us be slow to speak as you instruct us in your word and quick to hear, quick to listen. We thank you for that this morning, oh God. And we just honor you, God, that even what people mean to do out of spite, your word confirms that even what people do out of spite we can turn around and be a blessing to those who are faithful to you, those who are walking in the way that is right, those who are obedient to your will. God, thank you that what people mean for bad, what the enemy meant for bad, God. You always mean it for our good and we can rest in that promise today. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what plots the enemy is, is con the, what the enemy is doing, what he's coming up with, God. It doesn't matter because, Lord, we know that no plot or plan will prevail against your will for our lives. So, God, we just thank you this morning. Oh, God, we honor you for your word. Lord, I ask you now to go for the prayer warriors, Lord, and make every crooked path straight. Oh, God, bring every, thank you, God, to make every rugged path smooth. God, to bring every high place low. God, just keep them out of the reach, God, of those who can truly harm and destroy them, Father God. Let them be undetectable under the radar of the enemy. God, let them advance across enemy lines, God. And I just thank you for this morning that they will wave the flag of victory Father, I thank you for this one. I can just see it in the spirit that we're waving flags of victory. We're doing a victory dance because what the enemy thought he was going to use to destroy us, oh God, it is backfiring. And we thank you for that this one, oh God, that our enemies are being even destroyed with the backside of the spear. We thank you for this one in ways that did not see coming. Thank you, oh God, that they're being destroyed in ways that they did not see coming. God, we just honor you this morning, Father. Ask you to bless the prayer warriors, every son and daughter under the sound of my voice. Be with them in their coming and in their going. Where they go, everything they do, bless them, increase them, enlarge their territories. 
broaden their horizon, cause them to have God-sized dreams and visions. Their dream changes, oh God. Thank you, oh God, as we pursue you, God. We will also see the full manifestation of your promises, oh God. Our dreams, God, are coming to pass. Our visions are coming to pass. God, thank you for health and strength. God, thank you for favor. Thank you for open doors. God, thank you for wisdom. Oh God, thank you, thank you, thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. We just honor you this morning. Lord, we lift up every to you this morning. God, we ask you to heal her, Lord, according to your will. God, answer this prayer in a way that will bring you the most glory and honor to your name. God, we lift up Monica Sykes to you this morning. God, in our prayers, the prayer warriors standing in with her mother this morning, Miss Regina Sykes. God, just standing shoulder to shoulder, link them before your throne. Morning after morning, petition you, God, for a recovery. Just asking God that you will bring her home alive and well. That is our prayer. Yes, it seems impossible, but God, nothing is too hard for you and nothing is impossible for you. So, God, we just pray that you will take careful consideration of this prayer, God, that it will cause you to bend and listen and answer, God. So, we just thank you, God, for your goodness. Lord, answer our prayers in a way that will bring you the most glory and honor. God, you're good to us, Lord. You're good to us, God, and we just rejoice in you this morning, God. We celebrate you. Thank you for waking us up earlier. Thank you for giving us a fresh hunger and zeal for you and for the study of your word, God, and just teach us how to apply your word to our lives, God, and we just honor you for this morning. God, you are good, and your mercy endures forever, and God, you are our ultimate battle fighter. So no matter what we're up against today, no matter what you're up against today, know that God is with you, and if he be for you, not a devil in hell can prevail against you, God. We thank you for that assurance in your word. And oh God, before we close out this prayer, God, we just armor up this morning, God, with the better truth around our waist, God. We wear the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. Oh God, Lord, we thank you for sandals of peace. Oh God, we thank you, Lord, for the shield of faith, and we thank you for the sword of the spirit, which is your word, God. Hide it in our hearts that we will not sin against you, God. We begin to make the wrong step. Remind us of your word, Holy Spirit. Remind us of your word. Keep us in line with you, in sync with you, in sync with the pulse and the very rhythm and heartbeat of heaven, God. That is our prayer this morning. That we'll be in alignment with your will, God. We thank you that even our thoughts are becoming agreeable to your will. Lord, we honor you. We bless your holy name, God, for every son and daughter who will later view this video. We speak the prayer of speak a blessing over them, God, that you will touch their hearts, God, and you will cause them to join in with what you are doing, God, this movement. So we honor you for this morning, God, that we are one million strong and counting. God, we just honor you for your faithfulness, oh God. We thank you with our own eyes. We will see your hand. We will see your goodness in the land of the living. God, I cover every household under the sound of my voice in your blood. Every prayer request. Make sure you're typing in your prayer request. Every prayer request is coming in, God. We cover them in your precious blood, oh God. Answer, God, these petitions in a way that will bring you the most glory and honor to your name. God, every dream, whatever your dream is, whatever your hope is, whatever you're aspiring to do or to be, whatever you want to see happen in your life, for marriages that need to be restored, for families like my own that need to be restored. God, I just we just lay at your feet this morning, oh God. We can't do this, but you can, God. Nothing is too hard for you, God. We cover our countries, every flag that is posted, every nation, every city, God, every territory, every tribe. God, every tongue. Lord, we just covered him in your blood this morning. God, just see us here. See us here before your throne, God, and do what only you can do in our lives, God. Anybody needs a healing. We thank you for that this morning, oh God. Heal your people, Father God. Those who are getting up and coming before you. Those who are serious about you, oh God. Lord, restore their lives. Restore their homes. Restore their finances, oh God. Restore their minds, Father God. Everything, God, that has been broken. Lord, you just piece it back together again, and we just honor you for this morning, Lord. You are a good, Lord. We just thank you for these prayers. Thank you, God, that we can have a hope and trust that when we post these prayers, you see and you answer. So, God, we just honor you in advance of what you are doing. Oh, God, that we truly are living in warrior blessings. God, we thank you for this morning. Oh, God, thank you. Oh, God, thank you for being so faithful to us, Father God. Oh, God, we honor you. Oh, God, we honor you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I love y'all. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I just can't fight it. Yes. Okay, y'all. I love you guys. I'll see you uh, Monday morning, and I'll give you more details because, you know, next week is a busy week for me. So I'm definitely going to need your prayers, but I'll talk more about that on Monday. Go back and read 2 Samuel, the first chapter, second chapter, and make sure you read this chapter so we can be ready for next week when we see what happens with, our, with old Uncle Abner and just some other things. We're going to begin to look at the dark side of David and just see how he begins to miss it because we don't want to miss it, y'all. So I love you guys, and I'll see you on Monday. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus.